At this point in my YouTube career, I've talked about four out of five of my favorite dressed horror films. The Lost Boys, Alien, Jaws, and most recently Near Dark. Now that Halloween's coming closer, I want to talk about that fifth and final film, which is The Thing. Although the clothing isn't as dark as The Lost Boys or as futuristic as Alien, it has an amazing outdoorsman aesthetic mixed in with military pieces and is surprisingly accurate for what these guys would wear. These outfits may be simple, but they are perfectly executed and look great on everybody. Plus, it provided us with an iconic character outfit that has been cosplayed numerous times. So let's talk about these simple but great fits and styles in the thing and how accurate it was compared to what NASA astronauts were wearing during training missions. First, let's talk about NASA. During the 1960s, astronauts like Neil Armstrong traveled to places like Idaho and Iceland in order to prepare themselves for future expeditions. And this was all photographed. And in these photos, you see that there was no uniform. And instead, they got to wear whatever they wanted, which led them to have their own sense of style and aesthetics, like a Western wear outfit or a Ivy League outfit. And there was this heavy combination of outdoorsman clothes and military pieces together, from flak jackets and bombers to hiking boots and flannels. These guys were so stylish and I was honestly surprised when I found these photos thanks to Dye Workwear. I just never thought it, they would have looked like this, but their outfits were just as practical as they were stylish and wearable. So let's now compare them to what the crew from Outpost 31 wore. The 12-man crew were stationed in Antarctica, and like the astronauts, they did not have a uniform, but they did dress similarly outside. Outside, they wore a down parka, insulated cargo pants, a pair of black snow boots, and a balaclava. Their parkas range from military ones like an M3B parka that features a fur-lined hood, raglan sleeves, and other details like various pockets, to outdoor brand ones that could have been from places like Eddie Bauer, Woolrich, L.L. Bean, and the way that they made a distinction between these parkas was having different colors from blacks to navies to tans to greens. I think the parkas looked great on them and the outfits in general looked great on them. And personally, I think parkas are a great piece to have in your wardrobe because it's both practical as well as stylish, especially if you're pulling like a vintage one from one of the brands that I mentioned before. I recently just got a vintage REI parka, but I'm super excited to wear it this winter. It's a nice oversized fit and a perfect color for my wardrobe, and I'm definitely gonna have to channel these guys when I wear it out. If you're interested in these parkas or this look, then you should go to people like Ed Anthony Stanford or Nigel Caborn. Both are vintage collectors and sellers that have this vintage aesthetic matching military pieces and outdoor pieces, and they pull it off effortlessly. As for the rest of their clothes, a lot of it consisted of outdoor pieces like knitted sweaters that you saw on Fuchs and Vans to puffer vests that we would see from people like George with his orange quilted one or Childs who wore a collarless navy one that I loved and now need. If we go back to some of the photos from the astronauts, we also see a decent amount of sweaters and some of them even styled the same way Vans did with button ups layered underneath. Two people that I thought had great outdoorsman outfits were Blair and Clark. Blair had a more refined look with his light gray long sleeve thermal underneath a pale yellow moleskin work shirt with double chest pockets. On bottom were a pair of dark gray straight fit pants with green suspenders and then some brown hiking boots. I loved the rose colored glasses that he had on and his outfit was just simple but classic looking and it reminded me of some of the astronauts outfits with all of their work shirts. Then there was Clark who had more of a rugged outdoorsman look with his dark brown flannel with double chest pockets. At one point he threw on a Detroit Carhartt type jacket with that green corduroy collar. And then after all that, he also threw on an N3B parka. On bottom were a pair of brown straight fit cargos and brown hiking boots and a green five panel hat to finalize the look. All of this is giving off this feeling of a workwear lumberjack that just wants to take care of his dogs. Like the astronauts, you see this combination of military wear and outdoorsman pieces, and I think the best example of this is Childs, who wears a woolly pulley sweater underneath that collarless vest that I talked about before, and then this navy down parka over everything. It makes sense seeing this combination because both of these groups influence each other, whether that be L.L. Bean, who is taking a leather bomber jacket, to the military asking other outdoor brands to create camos for them. Again, that vest is a great piece, and it's been done by literally everybody, from the military with quilted liners to brands like Woolrich and Eddie Bauer, and even to higher-end brands like Stone Island and Engineered Garments. Now on bottom were some straight-fit jeans as well as brown hiking boots. It's people like Fuchs and Childs that had a similar fit on bottom, to some of the astronauts in the 60s, as there were a decent amount of denim on them. 
Last thing I want to mention about Childs is that I love how they made his outfit monochromatic because it actually made him stand out from the group. Now, some of these guys also had their own senses of style with or without the workwear gear. With a couple characters, you had a 70s Americana look, like Windows who had a 70s workwear outfit with his workwear shirt, flared jeans, and brown boots. And then there was Nalls who had a beautiful fader tee over a thermal long sleeve and some black flared pants with roller blades. Then there was Palmer who had this metalhead meets motorcycle aesthetic with his sleeveless denim vest with the Barbarian's California design on the back. Underneath that was a light gray crew neck sweatshirt under a green sleeveless tee. On bottom are some slim straight jeans and a dark rinse color with some black engineer boots that look beautiful. That being said, the top portion of his outfit really wasn't for me. It's just not my thing. Last thing I wanna say, it's not even about somebody's aesthetic, it's more about a detail. I loved that they gave Doc Cooper a nose ring. I never thought I would have seen it, especially on somebody like him, but I'm glad I did. Now, the moment you've all probably been waiting for, McCready's outfit. It is definitely the standout and for a good reason. Since he served in Vietnam and is serving as the helicopter pilot, his outfit is heavily influenced by military. For his base layer, he's wearing a white long sleeve thermal under a marled gray t-shirt. Over there was a flight suit, possibly a K2V flight suit as called out by Nick from BAMP Style. When McCree's not wearing the top portion of the suit, we see him in his base layers or the iconic blue hoodie that you're most likely familiar with, or at one point, this black, red, and cream knitted sweater that he wears. Overall, that is a shot 674 leather jacket with the fur collar and Sherpa lining, cargo pockets and epaulettes. On feet are some black leather combat boots that appear to be Rose Search combat boots, but it's not a definite. But what is a definite are his sunglasses, which are a pair of Varnet 027 Glacier glasses, which add to his aesthetic perfectly, and so does the ridiculously large sombrero type hat. Now the astronauts did wear some fun hats like cowboy hats and fur trapper hats and berets, but nothing as crazy as McCready. It's absurdly big and overcompensating with it being worn in and curled up on all sides. And although I don't know how practical it is for a helicopter pilot, it is such an iconic piece and made an iconic outfit even more iconic. Obviously his outfit is my favorite. I mean, how could it not be from the layering to the flight suit used as pants and all the details on it, like the cargo pocket zippers and seam detailing. And then the cut of that shot jacket is beautiful with all of those details. I mean, it's a great outfit. It all looks brilliant. And I was surprisingly a fan of the blue hoodie, even though it doesn't really make sense with everything else, but it works for him. Now the actors at Outpost 31 weren't the only ones that were fitted during filming. John Carpenter had some amazing outfits during the filming of this movie. Of course, he wore a N3B parka to keep himself warm, but he was also seen in these slim fitted polos that looked awesome on him and this luscious looking sweater. Some of my favorite outfits from this time was him wearing flare jeans, whether that be with a navy raglan sweatshirt to the black satin bomber where you get an even better look at those leg openings. The jeans are so 70s and I love it, which makes sense because the film was made in 81 and we're probably still getting like trickling of that 70s aesthetic. I think the wardrobe department did a great job at giving these guys outfits that were simple but clean and that were accurate for an expedition like this. Comparing the photos to the film, although it is warmer for these astronauts, they are also wearing quilted jackets and bombers. And one can assume that if they were in a colder climate, they would be wearing down parkas like Eddie Bauer, Woolrich, or an N3B parka. Which leads me to the question, were they influenced by these photos? Did they know about these photos or was it just a happy coincidence? But regardless, I think some people disregard horror films, especially like the thing when it comes to wardrobes, but they shouldn't. If you like that outdoorsman aesthetic and brands like Eddie Bauer, Ella Bean, Woolrich, or military pieces, then The Thing is a great place to go to for some classic pieces and outfits for this fall and winter. I also like how there's left field outfits and personalized outfits like Palmer, who had this metal head motorcycle outfit, to McCready, who had this quirky military look. And then of course, how could you forget John Carpenter with his 70s aesthetic that is totally a vibe. But what do you guys think of the wardrobe? Did you guys like it? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're doing that, like the video, subscribe, follow me on all my socials. It's all linked down below, as well as the articles I read to prepare for this video. And that is gonna be it for me. Thank you guys for watching. Happy Halloween. See you next time.